everybody in Philly wants to know. I feel great. <laughs> I missed too many free throws. I'm like you now. <laughs> With James Harden going down, the 76ers would need somebody to step up. And as of late, that somebody has been Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid has been absolutely phenomenal for Philly. What else is new? According to StatMuse, Joel Embiid had one of the greatest performances in NBA history, doing things that nobody else had done against the Jazz November 13th. How good was Embiid's performance against Utah? Well, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. All he had was 59 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, and 7 blocks. He truly dominated both sides of the basketball, and what's terrifying is the night before, he would put up 42 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 blocks, and 2 steals. The Atlanta Hawks had no clue what hit them. Guys, that's 101 points inside the span of around 24 hours. Guys, I'm convinced Embiid is not human. Guys, his size doing this to teams is not fair. According to the creator of Basketball Reference, after Embiid's 59 point performance, he would become one of five players to average at least 40 points, 10 boards, and five assists over a four game span since the ABA-NBA merger. The only others to do it would be Luka Doncic, Russell Westbrook, Michael Jordan, and Larry Bird. If you ask me, that's not bad company. You know what, I'm going to say it. I think it's criminal that Embiid hasn't won one MVP yet. Let me know what you guys think of that down in the comments below. To add to the whole terrifying thing that I was talking about, Embiid isn't even fully healthy yet, and yet he's still making the game of basketball look ridiculously easy. When he was asked about the fall that he had a few games ago, he said his ankle was pretty sore. Then he addressed some concerns about his shoulder saying, I don't know what happened, but some days I can't lift my arm up. And when I go to block shots, I really feel it. I don't know what's going on, but it's whatever. Don't forget that he was also dealing with plantar fasciitis in the off season, which helped lead to that slow start to the season. They got a whole bunch of people worried about nothing. When it comes to Embiid, the list really does go on. He's had to deal with and play through a lot throughout the course of his career. Now, as good as Embiid has been for Philly, he's just one guy. According to Schumann, in Philly's last three games, Philly has outscored its opponents by 23.4 points per 100 possessions and Embiid's 108 minutes, and they've been outscored by 54.7 points per 100 possessions and his 36 minutes on the bench. According to ESPN Stats and Info, last season the 76ers had a similar problem. Last season, the 76ers outscored their opponents by 12 points per 100 possessions when Embiid was on the court. They were outscored by more than 4 points per 100 possessions when he was off the floor. Guys, this would make for the largest differential in on-off-court net rating in the NBA. Going forward, the 76ers have to find ways to survive their minutes without Joel Embiid. And the 76ers also have to find ways to make the life of Embiid easier. At the moment, Embiid has one of the highest usage rates in the league at 37.3%. This is around where it was last year, but I'm not sure that makes things any better. This guy is a 280 pound footer, yet he has a higher usage rate than guys like Ja Morant, Trey Young, and Kevin Durant. That's kind of bonkers when you think about it. Now naturally it doesn't help that Harden's been out, but like I said, his rate was virtually the same last season. Look guys, maybe I'm tripping. I just want Embiid to be saved for the playoffs as much as possible. Embiid is undoubtedly one of the best players in the league, and the 76ers know this. They also know the clock is ticking. James Harden's 33 and Embiid is 28 with what feels like a lot of mileage, even if it isn't. We've already seen the 76ers swing for the fences with James Harden. Well, what if I told you guys that the 76ers were trying to swing for the fences again? Guys, just check out this report. Quote, there is no doubt the Sixers have asked on Durant. They did this summer and will keep asking about him, an Eastern Conference executive told Devonick. But the Nets are going to be a little put off by them already because of the Ben Simmons thing. Because they feel like they were set up to give away James Harden all along. The Sixers burned them once. Do the Nets want to go back and say, okay, sure, we'll do a deal for KD too? 
to continue. The main thing is, though, does Tyrese Maxey get put into the deal? Because the Nets have to listen. They might not get a better young player than him in any deal they make for Durant. Maxey, Tobias Harris, and Thibault will work, but the Nets would not get any picks in the deal because Philly can't offer any right now. If that is all that is on the table, Brooklyn would have to pass. The Nets being upset about the Ben Simmons trade is hilarious and kind of sad at the same time. Now to get to the part where the Sixers are asking about Durant, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, what would the Sixers have to offer? When you think about a trade package for Durant coming from Philly, you know that Tyrese Maxey is going to have to be involved. That part is pretty much not in question. What is in question is why you would want to gut your team even more for a star that has been disgruntled more times than not. Earlier, I talked about guys not getting any younger. Kevin Durant is currently 34 years old. Let's say with Durant, the Sixers are serious contenders. I'm not saying that they're not or anything right now. I'm just saying that with Durant, let's say they're very serious contenders. How big is their title window going to be with a 34-year-old Durant, a 33-year-old Harden, and a 28-year-old Joel Embiid? More importantly, how fragile is that window going to be? I think Daryl Morey is an okay GM. I think he puts together rosters with stars that are top-heavy that give you a chance if everything breaks right. But if something goes wrong, then it's all going to come tumbling down and all of your assets are just going to be gone. As entertaining as this report is and as star hungry as Daryl Morey is, for the moment, I'm just going to choose to not believe it. Let me know what you guys think of it down in the comments below. Now, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I feel like Maxi brings a much needed element to the 76ers. His energy is contagious and his ability to thrive off ball is pretty valuable in today's game. Maxi is only 22 and he's already averaging 22.8 points, 3.4 rebounds and 4.4 assists. This season, he's also getting up seven threes a game at almost 41%. His shooting is so valuable that Embiid actually wants this guy taking 10 to 15 threes a game. The fact that this is even a talking point speaks volumes to his work ethic. Now on the Brooklyn side of things, I wouldn't exactly be the most shocked person to see Kevin Durant get traded this season if things continued to go south. In my last Nets video, I said that the Nets were playing a little better compared to their terrible start to the season. And while I was right, they did just give up 153 points to a hot Sacramento team. Which, by the way, let me know if you guys want a Kings video down in the comments below because my guy De'Aaron Fox has been doing his thing. The Nets are in a really weird place. They flat out don't own their pick without any funny business until like 2028 which means that the Nets probably want to remain somewhat competitive. The good news for the Brooklyn Nets is that if they were to tear things down, they do have some role players that contenders would desire. And of course, they also do have Kevin Durant. Now, of course, they'd have to be a little more realistic with their demands for Durant, but I really do see no reason why they couldn't get a haul, or at least a really good young player and a few picks. What's also good for the Nets is that the Rockets have been so bad that there might just be no need to exercise that pick swap, even if the season does go south. Guys, in the comments below, let me know what you think of everything. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Gilly Coop, bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.